a little bit different. I'm using a program called uh, uh, Record My Desktop. Uh, it's a Raspberry Pi program and I'm using it to uh, give you a demonstration of the program I wrote called uh, Speed Tracking. Uh, I have a previous video on uh, uh, motion tracking and it uses uh, the Pi Camera and OpenCV and it's written in Python and basically it uh, takes two pictures, compares them, subtracts them and uh, then does some processing to detect the motion. You get, and it uh, will give you the XY coordinates of the, uh, of the uh, contours that it finds and I just take the biggest one. So on the Raspberry Pi forum there was a comment about trying to capture vehicles speeds using the camera. So uh, using that as inspiration I've uh, decided why not? Uh, see if I can do it. So um, I have written a program, I call it uh, Speed Tracking and uh, I'll give you a demonstration of that. Uh, here's uh, here I am pulling out of the driveway. Um, the two blue lines are the uh, X upper and X lower and that restricts the area where motion is detected. And uh, here I back up. Uh, I have a threshold length uh, that the track has to be. Oh, there I go. Okay, so that was uh, 8 0.2 miles per hour that I went back by and you can see a, a green dot that shows uh, where the motion uh, center was detected which is really the center of the threshold. Uh, there's another one and uh, you can see the trees moving and a few other things. I'll show you later on there's a rabbit that crosses the road but I didn't get a speed on him because there's a minimum uh, there I am there and I'm waving. Okay. And uh, there's a minimum. There's another one. Okay. Uh, there's an, uh, a minimum area that the uh, contour has to be. And uh, I have got this set up on verbose mode and uh, various settings that you can uh, set up. And um, that's about it. Um, it will be up on GitHub. And I'm hoping to, oh, there's a rabbit. Just went across the road if you, if you caught him. Uh, and uh, anyway, it's, uh, it's a fun uh, project. Uh, there's a, a calibration uh, program that's built in or feature. And what it does is it takes this upper line and draws uh, cross hatches at every 10 pixels. And I will show a picture of that in a minute. And uh, what you do is you take a picture of a car that you know what the length of it is. Uh, we're in Canada. I, I'm old school. I tend to go with feet, but uh, it will display it in meters uh, for metric people. And uh, oops, here I am turning off the display. But uh, anyway, um, the um, that's that's about it. And I uh, hope you'll uh, uh, take a look at it and uh, give me a like on uh, YouTube. Well, I hope you liked uh, my little uh, demonstration here. It's uh, Interesting, it's the first time I've used uh, Record to My Desktop, uh, which you can do an app get uh, in, uh, on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, the screen's uh, maybe a little pink, but hey, it's a Raspberry Pi, so what do you expect? Um, anyway, the program's written in Python and uh, uses the Pi Camera and OpenCV2, and uh, it needs to be calibrated but it does uh, it's actually a reasonable job of, uh, of uh, recording uh, vehicles or people. I'll give a few pictures here to give you some samples. Uh, fast vehicles, sometimes it misses it uh, 
and the uh, the pictures uh, quite often uh, the vehicles pass before it takes the final uh, speed picture but uh, uh, it was just a fun project and uh, I had uh, I, a lot of fun writing it but uh, or rewriting it <laughs> uh, but anyway uh, thanks for watching and uh, have a great day bye bye well, here's my uh, SSH uh, session into my uh, Don robot. I'll show you how to uh, install my desktop. sudo app get install record my desktop. It's already installed. And then I wrote a little script called uh, record.shell. It just says uh, record my desktop. Um, no sound because I uh, didn't have sound uh, hooked up to my uh, Raspberry and um, got the program in CD uh, speed track. and here it is here um, so I've got a calibration photo uh, images are in here So those are the various images. And uh, there's speed settings. So we've got verbose mode that just uh, shows display. Uh, display uh, frames per second. That was more for testing of the OpenCV. You can log the information to file or not. I've got that turned on. Uh, you can uh, display the uh, OpenCV window uh, on a GUI desktop, uh, but otherwise you can run it in a desktop session. Uh, calibration, uh, it basically just turns the, uh, takes the program, puts it into calibration mode, asks you to hit the enter key uh, when you're ready. And uh, then when a car or vehicle that you know what the size of it is uh, goes by, you take a picture and then uh, it shows the cross hatching for the other video. These are uh, the motion settings for the camera. Uh, uh, so they're 320 by 240. That's not the final picture, that's just the motion, uh, what it's using for motion uh, OpenCV. Uh, that's the uh, resolution of the photo uh, speed photo uh, image and uh, some motion tracking settings uh, minimum area is in pixels uh, square pixels and that's just to keep uh, small differences or small contours uh, from triggering and uh, that's just the size of the circle uh, blur is just a feature uh, to um, when you have a difference picture, you want to enhance the black and white on the grayscale. So, threshold is uh, basically the threshold uh, that OpenCV uses for uh, detecting contours. Uh, event timeout is a setting for uh, uh, timing out the uh, if a vehicle comes into the frame but doesn't leave or doesn't track far enough or it's uh, too slow or some other reason then uh, then it'll time out and it'll start looking for a new uh, starting uh, point for the next track. Uh, difference is uh, uh, a minimum that the pixel has to be it has to be within a specific range of the current XY coordinate uh, of the track and uh, if it's greater than that then it's uh, an unrealistic speed so um, I've just set that at a reasonable what I thought was a reasonable value but it can be changed and the track length is uh, how long the uh, the track length from the start of the track to the current position if it's more than 160 pixels then it triggers the photo uh, picture and this is the up y upper and y uh, lower and uh, the code is uh, here uh, 
Oh, there's the log file. Okay, basically just a, so a little bit of instruction, uh, setting up the library, uh, um, setting up the uh, uh, libraries to import. Now I keep the configuration separate, so um, you'll see it get imported as a separate entity. I've done that in uh, PyTimeOlo, which is a time-lapse motion low-light camera setting uh, program I wrote that's also on my GitHub. These are the uh, libraries that probably will need to be imported, which would be OpenCV, Python PyCamera, uh, Python Images. I put a, a display of the time and uh, speed on the picture itself. So that's what uh, Python Images is used for. And uh, PyExiv is... Uh, uh, I use it because the PyCamera doesn't store uh, uh, sorry, Py, Python Images doesn't store the EXIF data, uh, so this uh, copies it across. You'll see that code in here if you look around. So, just uh, speed conversion between uh, uh, Imperial and uh, Metric. Some uh, common functions. That's just the uh, display for the various settings. So you, uh, Here's the instructions for taking the camera uh, picture and how to calculate the, uh, the value for the image view uh, feet. Uh, for the function for uh, uh, storing it to a camera or to a file. The log files uh, this is for putting the image right, uh, for putting the text on the images. And here's the motion track program. It's, uh, it's a big loop. So the first part here is just uh, setting up the Pi camera and uh, starting the while loop. Uh, that's just a little bit of logic there to. Uh, uh, Fire off the uh, calibration if that's set, and it uses the Pi camera. Just waits, uh, uh, gets the camera ready for you, and, and when you hit the enter key, it takes a picture quicker, so you have a better chance of catching the vehicle. Okay, so here's the uh, OpenCV logic. Uh, basically, takes a grayscale of the first picture. Up here, the first image has to be taken. Uh, um, separately and then I skip that part because uh, after that I'm just uh, taking the first picture and switching it for the second picture and then uh, one great big loop so there's uh, only one one picture has to be taken uh, because it's using the previous one as uh, to compare it so uh, you change the picture to grayscale the current one which would be image two, and then take a dip, an abs, uh, absolute difference of the picture. So you're subtracting the two grayscale scale pictures, grayscale one and grayscale two. Then you're taking a difference image uh, by a blurring. Wait, sorry, you're, you're blurring the difference image, and that enhances the uh, the black and white, uh, so it it uh, can find thresholds. Uh, then the thresholds taken with the uh, the blurred difference image, and uh, and that will identify contours. And then here's where we uh, uh, pick up we uh, find all the contours. So that returns a, a contours uh, list, I guess. And then I calculate the total contours to see if everything, anything was found. And then what I do is I change grayscale 1 to grayscale 2. So ready for the next uh, the next uh, image. So then um, take a look at all the contours, cycle through them, and look for the biggest one with the uh, 
uh, biggest area, and that will. Uh, I'm. This program could be enhanced to look for uh, two vehicles or three or whatever, but I've just limited to one. Just uh, keeps it simple, and uh, it's just a demonstration. So, uh, here's the upper lower limits uh, to restrict the motion to those areas. Uh, then we're. Uh, taking the track length and the rest of the logic is just uh, I'll let you go through it. Uh, basically here what we're doing is we're looking for uh, uh, the absolute uh, position of the start and end uh, because it could be going either direction and then we're comparing that to the track length and if it's greater than the track length then uh, then we're going to take a picture, uh, a full-size picture. So we reset the resolution of the camera there's no further setup but just uh, then we're going to take, take a picture and then we're going to put the text on it then we're going to return the camera back to its original settings and reset some variables and if that doesn't happen, then all we're going to do is uh, check the event status or display the event status on how it's uh, progressing. So a track is made up of uh, several events, and once it gets over the threshold, then it triggers the, uh, the final picture. And these are just settings for the GUI. Now what I do is I uh, magnify the, uh, the default picture size, so you'll see this window bigger in here. Uh, is just a multiplier for the uh, for the camera width and height of the uh, image, and uh, then I display that, and that's about it. And the rest is just closing up. Well, hope you like it. Uh, uh, it works uh, surprisingly well. I had to rewrite it a couple of times, so uh, just slightly different logic, but uh, uh, hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.